G'day my friend, Marty and Karen here from Marty's Garden and today we're at Bunnings Garden Centre because we want to pick up some mulch for the backyard garden, the area that had the sand dig area and Karen actually had to come and pick up something else in town and what did you have to get Karen? A bird perch. And why do we need the bird perch? Um, for Bobby because his claws are getting really strong and sharp. Yeah, so that'll help bring down the sharpness and the claws, won't it? Yeah. Okay, so let's go and get our stuff have a cruise around Bunnings, I've got to get the mulch and we'll have a look around while we're in there. Okay. Marty's Garden teaches you how to grow fresh food in urban places and small spaces. There's my sugarcane mulch, organic sugarcane mulch. Ideal for vegetable gardens and general mulching. Ooh, look at those lovely strawberries on there. Great packaging. Let's see if she works, eh? Here we go. On the trolley. So Karen and I are back from Bunnings. She's got her bird perch for Bobby. And I've got my mulch here. It's a little bit heavy, but it's going to spread a long way right along this garden here. Karen's got the camera again. She's on camera. So... This little baby's going to spread out right through this whole garden here. And first I'm going to put down some uh, rock dust. And then I've got some actually just some cheap potting mix that I'm going to throw in as well to give the soil some structure before I lay this on top. Before we get started, I want to talk about rock dust. Now I got this bag for about 20 bucks at Bunnings. Now it's not cheap, I know. You can buy bigger bags at co-ops and things like that for $40, get 10 times as much, and even more trace elements in there. Now there are things, it's got the NPK, so you've got your nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium, etc., magnesium, uh, potash, and you've got your iron, your carbon, your silicon, and some trace minerals in here that are gonna help the plant's health and help the microbes uptake the nutrients. See what happens is, is when the sun is coming, it hits the plants, it photosynthesizes, the plant sends sugars down to the roots, the microbes go, oh yum, I love those sugars, and then in return allow the plant to uptake the nutrient that it needs and creates this bio cycle. And as we eat them, we consume those plants, gets into our system, makes us much more healthy, and then we compost right and keep that in an enclosed loop so when we spend this once these minerals stay in the garden because when we compost it it goes back in now it's got to come from somewhere guys so i highly recommend that you add this to any of your gardens even if you've got a, a compost system or anything like that, you can throw a couple of handfuls in or you've got a bale garden throw that in worm farms you can throw a little bit in because they'll crunch it up and make it bioavailable again to your garden Directions for use. Vegetables, sprinkle 125 to 175 per square meter of garden. Bed every six to eight weeks as required. So I want to discuss mulch because mulch is the perfect stuff to put on top of our garden beds. It keeps things warm in winter, cool in summer, the moisture in there locks in the microbes, brings in the worms, allows the roots to move around. It's great, great stuff. But the truth is, not every mulch is the same. Now, I like this fluffy stuff. When I was studying at college in agriculture, they taught us a lot about soil and, you know, the topsoil, the mulch the profiles and everything like that and this is really just the top of the profile of the soil and leaning underneath it is the microbes the worms the invertebrates 
they all start working together to make that humus layer. Now what happens is a lot of people like to use grass and they pack it on and pack it on to it's so thick and it compacts and even with this stuff if you compact it too much what happens is the air can't get in it becomes anaerobic and then it's no good it's doing the reverse effect it brings in different pathogens and brings in disease and it really starts hammering the plants so what I recommend is what you do is when you lay down your mulch put it on nice and fluffy then wet it down wet it down underneath first put it down nice and fluffy and keep it fluffy and aerated depending on what you use now if you're using wood chip and heavier mulches make sure it's blocky and sitting on top so the air can get in don't put it too thick because anything underneath where the thickness is uh, then it needs to break down it needs nitrogen to break down so it will take away nutrient from your soil and have a reverse effect so this stuff now I only used about one tenth of a bag to cover that whole garden up there I put it on about that thick so about an inch thick two and a half centimeters thick and i will layer it on and on now this cost me twenty dollars for this large bag but it's okay it's going to last me a long time i could find cheaper places but i was in bunnings at the time and it was where i need to get the mulch and it's organic too so i don't mind paying for that extra bit of quality nutrient sugarcane holds a fair bit of nutrient in it just depending on what the farmers have been feeding it the plants as well and then that'll get locked back in to my sandy soil. Now, over time, this soil's gonna improve. I'm gonna put some more on in about oh, a month or something. I'll just watch it over the next few weeks and see if it falls down. If it falls down a bit, I'll start putting some on and start encouraging the worms and the microbes and everything to come in. Now, the next layer I wanna put in is some cow manure, but I just didn't have enough money to put the cow manure in. Cow manure is a great fertilizer. The worms love it, the microbes love it. It's not super nutrient dense, but it seems to make the soil really alive. And they use it a lot in biodynamic farming because it passes through the animal gut, the cow gut twice, and gets really broken down. So it's in a broken down state. Now, the trick is if you're getting fresh stuff, don't put it on fresh, it needs to be dry. If you're putting it on too fresh, it also needs nitrogen and stuff to start breaking it down. So if you're going to put it on thick, make sure it's getting plenty of air. You can see it getting through, you can smell it, you can put your hand in and see if it's breaking down. You can check if there's any worms in there, you get an idea. Now if it's getting a smell to it, then it's getting anaerobic. And you need to somehow thin it down or stop it from being so compacted. i got to say, I'm pretty happy with this, seeing though it's only been planted about four days ago. Everything's looking like it's settling right in. The passion fruit's gonna climb up the fence here. We've also got sweet potato over here that'll climb up the fence and I'll be picking these fresh shoots, the stir fries and getting the sweet potato out of there. The Thai basil will come into flower. My salon spinach will throw more seed and it's a perennial so eventually next summer it'll grow up the fence as well. And I'll be able to use all this vertical space. Especially, I'm really looking forward to having green papaya salad. Now this guy will kick in. Once he gets healthy, he'll love that sandy soil. Papaya love great drainage. Bobby liked me today? Yeah. No biting dad today. Oh, oh, now he, getting, he might have to get him off current. What's coming up for Marty's Garden Show? Well, Karen, in our next video, I'm going to show everyone our Kangkong and Herb veggie garden that's growing in the window. It's just amazing, and it keeps on pumping out food day after day.